Hello, my name is Katie and today I'm joined by museum scientist Hannah and we're going to be talking all about frogfish. If you haven't seen our previous video about frogfish, then make sure you check that out. So thank you so much for joining us today. No These things are absolutely fascinating. Mm. So am I right in thinking that unlike most fish, they don't swim, they actually walk? Yes, that's right, yeah. Frogfish are pretty unique in the fact that they, their main mode of locomotion is through walking. So interestingly, they've got two pairs of paired fins known as the pectoral and pelvic. You can see that here on this specimen. These okay. two are yeah. the pectoral and those are the pelvic. Yeah. And they can move in two different kinds of gates. So the first is known as crutching, which, as the name suggests, they sort of swing along using their pectoral fins to take the brunt of their weight. They move their bodies forward and then their pelvic fins take the weight whilst they move their pectoral fins around. And then they can also move mainly using their pectoral fins okay. as though they were legs, sort of just walking along like that with their pelvic fins for support. But they can still swim, interestingly enough. Oh, okay. So when they need to travel further distances, yeah. they can use various methods of swimming, including something called jet propulsion. Right. Um, but most of the time, they stick to the seafloor and walk. Wow, I mean, just looking at these, they're quite small mm. um, to kind of hold, hold them up and, and, and get them to, to move across the, the seafloor. Do we know why? they choose this method of transportation, they don't just go with swimming like most other fish. Yeah, well, they're, they're quite a highly adapted kind of fish okay. and they are mostly ambush predators, so right. they don't really require speed and swimming in okay. their lifestyle. Yeah. They sit and wait for their prey to come to them using a special structure called the elysium as sort of like a, a lure to bring in their prey. So they don't need the the speed of swimming to achieve their lifestyle. Okay, and you said they, they live on the, the sea floor. Mm. Um, do they have to be quite camouflaged to do that? Yeah, so these fish are um, masters of disguise, you okay. could say. Um, yeah, so they, as you can see here with these two different species of frogfish, um, they're very blotchy, they have interesting colour patterns, and this will help them blend in to their habitats. Right. So this fish here is called Histrio histrio, okay. also known as the sargassum fish. And it blends in perfectly with seaweed. Um, and then this fish here is known as the striated frogfish or the hairy frogfish. And they are really cool because they can have four different color morphs. Um, so this one here is sort of a more brownish orange colourway, but they can also be found in more green colourway. They can be white and probably my favourite colour morph of this is they can be completely black. And that's because it helps them look exactly like a sea urchin wow. to blend in with the surroundings so they don't get noticed by the prey they're trying to lure in. I see. So is this to help with hunting? That is this the reason they, they're camouflaged? Mm, yeah, definitely hunting comes into it. As we said before, that they are ambush predators, so they don't want to be noticed by mm. their, their prey. They need sort of the element of surprise. Um, but also there's something called protective resemblance, which we think that they're also camouflaged to help hide them from other predators as okay. well. Um, it's been recorded that the frogfish can also prey on other frogfish. Oh. So they don't need to hide themselves just from their prey, it's, mm. it's the other predators around them that can also cause harm. So is this species quite rare? Are, are they found kind of all over the world? Yeah, so there's about 50 plus species of frogfish okay. and they're mainly found in sort of tropical waters. Um, but they're part of a bigger group known as the lophiforms, which include fish such as anglerfish, which right. people may be more familiar mm. with. Um, but the frogfish themselves are a, are a smaller subset of that group. I see, I see. I mean, these are absolutely 
fascinating just mm, seeing them here yeah, in front of us yeah. as well they're a lot smaller than I imagined I think I thought they'd, they'd be a lot bigger you do get um, bigger specimens okay. there's something called the giant frogfish aptly wow. named so oh, wow. they can get can get much bigger okay. than this wow and they're fascinating creatures to look at so you mentioned they're related to anglerfish and am I right in thinking they've got the Elysium as well. So how, how does that work? It, does it work in, in a similar way? Yeah, so the loafer forms, so including the anglerfish and the frogfish, they are unique in the, the fish world of having this Elysium. Um, and so it's a, a modified dorsal fin actually, and it acts as a sort of, there's an analogy where it acts as a fishing rod. So there's something called the Elysium, which is the rod, and then it's tipped with something called an esker, which is sort of like the lure you would have on the end of a fishing rod. Okay. And the esker, um, in anglerfish, it's sort of known for being bioluminescent, you okay. see it attracting fish, and it works in a very similar way in frogfish. So actually the esker is unique in all the different frogfish species. Okay. So for example, in the striated or the hairy frogfish, the esker is shaped like a bioluminescent worm and they actually move it in the same way that the worm would move to attract in their prey and so they can then sit there whilst the esker and the Elysium move to bring in their prey and then they strike when the fish is close enough in a movement as quick as six milliseconds. Wow that's very it's fast. incredible <laughs> yeah. I mean these are absolutely fascinating creatures. I could ask you so many more questions about them. Um, but thank you so much no for joining problem. us today. Well, I didn't know that some fish could walk. Did you? Let us know in the comments. And in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content from the Natural History Museum.